guys. I'm John. Can everyone hear me? Yeah, wow, you guys are very tall and my echo is very strange. Uh, you'll uh, forgive me. So anyway, I want to start with a small survey. I want to see a show of hands. Whoever wrote a piece of code and had to debug it. For example, you wrote a code that had to uh, uh, give you the square root of a number, but instead it gave you the power of the number. So come on, show of hands. OK, so that's most of you. What about hung Python processes? So for example, I wrote a piece of code, and now it's stuck on some system call, or two threads are uh, deadlocked uh, because of a semaphore or something like that. So come on, show of hands. Wow, that's a lot of you. So um, you probably know the feeling. The feeling is something like that. Um, I'm the little uh, kangaroo at the side. I'm like, what? So we are here because there are mainly three, uh, roughly three, uh, different, ty uh, different types of program we uh, wish to debug. The first one is easy. It's, uh, the program doesn't do what I want it to do. Instead of giving me the square root, it gives me the power of a number. The number of tools are a lot. There are a lot of tools. We can use print uh, to debug uh, certain elements of the code. Uh, we can use PDB in order to examine where we are in the code, what the code is doing, um, step into code, and so on and so forth. The program crashed. So if the program crashed, it's an easy job for us, right? Because we probably have the traceback. If you have the traceback, we can go back and see where and why the code did what it did. If we don't, probably a try accept exception. We can uh, look for and uh, input and either comment it or print some uh, traceback from there. And then once we are in that case, we can go back to number one and use prints or uh, PDB or whatever we want to do. But if my program seems to be stuck and I don't know what it's really doing, what can I do? So we will learn tools that will help you uh, understand what the program is doing. It won't teach you how to debug the code. You still have to think and know how to uh, debug code and interact with it. The main issue we want to face here and we want to address is what the program is doing. And once we know what the program is doing, we can figure out the why and um, go on. So I'm John. I've uh, been using Python since 2008. I started in the uh, intelligence core in the IDF. I currently work at uh, Red Hat. I contribute for OpenStack. It's, uh, a perfect uh, software, no bugs, I'm about to be fired. And I like uh, solving um, uh, problems with my code. I have a lot of programs, don't tell my bosses. PDB is easy, right? We can use PDB in order to attach, sorry, to uh, go into a program and see what the program is doing. We can step into functions, we can uh, skip over them, we can print all sorts of variables and uh, call new functions, and we can go uh, uh, print the surrounding Python code, and we can look at the uh, stack trace, and so on and so forth. It is all very easy. Uh, but in order to do this, we have to uh, halt the code, put in a breakpoint. We, can, we need to input these lines, or uh, one line in this case, uh, and then restart the program. If we have a hung Python process, we don't necessarily, or we necessarily don't want to restart the program because then we will lose the state. And we can't use PDB in order to attach to a living uh, process. So what if I have a customer, the uh, customer gives me the environment and says, OK, look, your code is messed up. It's not working. What am I to do then? Uh, all sorts of uh, PDB commands. You probably know uh, most of them. I'm not going to uh, list them all. Uh, and our PDB is very similar to PDB. It gives you the exact same interface as PDB. Uh, you can install it using pip. And the thing is with RPDB is that it gives you, instead of uh, once you uh, set uh, trace, the uh, instruction is called, instead of giving you uh, the interface uh, directly into the STD in and STD out, it will hold, it will listen to some uh, port, and then you can connect to it using Telnet and uh, connect to it remotely. Uh, again, the same problem exists, right? We need to put a breakpoint inside the code, and then we need to restart the program, which is bad for us if we have a program that is deadlocked and it's an end case and we don't necessarily know how to reproduce this. Another very cool feature, a feature sorry, with RPDB is we can trigger it automatically whenever the program receives a SIG trap. So we input, uh, we insert this line of code uh, right near the main. If, the, if we think the program is stuck, then we can uh, send a signal. This will halt the program. We can thereafter connect 
uh, as before with Telnet or Netcat or whatever it is you prefer, and debug whatever you want to do. The problem exists still, it persists. How do we uh, do this for a program that is currently running and we don't want to um, restart? We don't want to lose the state. Let's examine S-Trace. S-Trace is a very neat uh, program. Uh, S-Trace stands for a system call tracer. And the thing with S-Trace is that it will take a live running program, or you can uh, start a new program with S-Trace. And it will show you all the system calls that the program is currently doing. So for example, if I open a file, say devnull, with I am read-only, and the function uh, returns successfully, uh, we will see the, um, the return value, and then we can uh, continue on and check what the program uh, did and why um, using um, a bit of a messy raw code. But we can see, for example, if we have the file descriptor tree, let's see uh, what the program actually did with it. Uh, failure is uh, very much similar. It will show the exact uh, arguments, and in case of a failure, we'll get the return value of the failure, minus one in this case. And it is smart enough to give us also the error no. So in this case, no file exists under uh, slash boost slash. I made a system call, and the system call is currently blocking. And this, would, this is what we will see, right? Um, this is the third line here. Rock the mouse, here it is. Uh, and what we will see is that we have no closing buckets. We don't have the equal sign, or we don't have a return value. And this will signify, it will hint that this code is currently running and it's not done yet, okay? But some of you might think, okay, so I ran S-Trace on a Python process, but Python is not, uh, Python is C, right? Because the backbone of Python is C Python and C Python is C. So if you can use S-Trace in order to debug a program, why not use GDB in order to debug the same program? So why do we want to use GDB? We want, we want to use GDB because it will allow us to attach into a production application that is currently running without losing the state. We can go into the code, we can attach to a live process and debug whatever we want to debug, like PDB, hopefully. Uh, we can also use it on remote applications. Our GDB has uh, neat features that allow it to run remotely. Uh, and RPDB also is installed from PIP. Not all uh, deployment environments can uh, has pip to begin with. GDB is something very common, and most uh, environment should have GDB, in my opinion. So if you can attach to a program, it will answer the question, my program seems to be stuck, and I don't know what it's doing. Let's use GDB in order to attach to a program and see what's going on. OK? So a few basics, very easy. We can connect to a running process using GDB minus p PID. Minus p uh, stands for uh, process ID. We can then use C in order to continue the run of the code. We can use Control-C to, to stop it again. We can use Control-D to detach it uh, from it completely and let the code run uh, on its own. The commands are very similar to uh, PDB. Uh, what I did here in this slide, I just copied the exact same slide from the PDB one. So we can list the surrounding C code and, the, uh, and see the uh, C uh, backtrace and so on and so forth. But the question is, wait, I have a Python process Right? We don't want the C stack, because the C stack contains data that is relevant to the C Python, and we want to see the Python stack. So for example, we have this code. Okay? It's very uh, simple. We have a main function. The main function is called function called foobar with some amount, and foobar will slip for that amount. It's very simple. So I ran this code, and we will run it uh, again in a few minutes. I ran this code. And uh, then I attach to the program with uh, GDB, and this is what I saw. This is a function call in C Python. We have a function called pi eval, eval frame x, and the eval frame x is, okay, I ran a C program, um, sorry, I ran a Python instruction, and it is in the file example1.py, in line 10, in module, whatever the module was. Uh, it is followed by call function. The call function will have a stack address, like a C-based memory. Uh, we can maybe inspect later on. We have some optimized code right here. Uh, we will observe and see and address it later on. We and this is followed by fun a fast function. And this is basically run this uh, code in Python, uh, as uh, displayed by the CPython interpreter. Uh, calling into the kernel, for example, making a system call looks very much the same. We have 
pi eval eval frame x, again in some file, again in some line, in some function or module, or whatever it is. A uh, call function is followed. Uh, then we have time slip, float slip, and select. And this select here is from the ellipsis. So this is already the C code um, that is actually run. The problem is that this is not really readable, right? I have this code, the code is stuck, and instead of uh, giving me good and valuable information, uh, the uh, talker gives me this, and this is crap. I agree with you. Uh, so for that, we have Python extensions uh, for GDB. Uh, these have been around since about 2010. I only discovered it uh, recently, like uh, last month. Um, I wish I had known about it much earlier. It would have made my life a lot easier. So the commands are a bit uh, different here. We have pi um, um, line. I don't know the uh, English word for that. I forgot it. And then list, we can use uh, pi uh, a bitty to inspect the Python stack trace, pi print in order to print Python variables. So this deals with not the C code, it deals with the Python code. So this is what we want, right? So if we have the same code, pi list will give us the Python code. Okay, and it will also, uh, also give us uh, this little arrow here and it will say, okay, this code currently at the current line that is running is line six. And backtrace will give us something that is a lot more human readable and friendly. We have here example one. Okay, so this is exactly the same code. I had the uh, shebang line here. Never mind that. Uh, I'm not lying to you. Okay, let's run it. First, let's um, examine it with example with F trace. Oopsie. We need to run it with Python, obviously. Okay, so now we see. For example, we have the open. Can everyone see that right in the back? Yeah, OK. So we have, for example, the open. The open open uh, file called the etc local time with this and that uh, arguments. And the value that was returned is 4. And then we can use fstat in order to see what, um, sorry, then we can see that the file descriptor here is used in fstat and read and seek and so on and so forth until it is closed. Um, errors are displayed like this, like we saw before. And select is something like this, but now we see there, again, no closing brackets and uh, no equal sign, no return value, so the program is indeed stuck. Let's run it with um, just Python. We have example one. So the program is running, okay? Uh, the process ID is 10155. So GDB minus P in order to attach to the program. 10155. Okay, so now we see a lot of uh, uh, read symbols, etc., etc. This is all sorts of uh, debug uh, information that tells us, okay, I am running this code. Uh, we have here lib, uh, lib Python here, so it knows all the symbols. So, for example, we can now use list in order to see the surrounding C code. Okay? But this is not what we want. We want to use PyList, and this will show us the Python code that is currently running. And PyBT will show us the backtrace that is currently running. And this is what we want, right? This will give us a lot more flexibility uh, in seeing and examining code. Uh, PyPrint, for example, on amount will show, OK, amount is a local variable, and its value is 1337, OK? Uh, another example that is very nice, okay, uh, and this is uh, based on something we actually encountered uh, at work, uh, only a lot more sim uh, simplified for you guys. So what this program does is it runs popen on some uh, code. We will see what that code is in just a minute. It will say, okay, my process ID is that and that. My child process ID is that and that. Code will sleep for a second. It will send seek term to the process in order to kill it, and we'll wait until it is actually dead. The main function registers some signal, some uh, signal handler, sorry, uh, while true, print some uh, value to the screen, okay, until there is uh, some exception, if there is an exception break, and do exit will simply say, okay, I'm about to exit, flush the STD out, because we've written a lot of data in a while true, we want to flush the um, STD out, and then we want to close it. 
the sector handler will change the flag to false, so the while true loop will become while false. The code will stop. So let's run the code. Python uh, example two. Okay, so the program is indeed running and stuck. Okay, I will hold this one. So one o two o one minus p. Well, sorry, one o two o one. And again, we can look and see. Okay, so the parent process is currently stuck on the wait. We can uh, examine the backtrace in order to see. Okay, it is actually in the way. This is how I got to this code. We can print the local variable. So we have, for example, the uh, p open process. And then we can see this is the std out, this is the std in. So it, uh, it gives us quite an interface that we can do a lot of things with it. Um, let's have a look at the child process to see what actually happened to the child process. Okay. Pi backtrace will show, okay, the, the code is currently running, the flush function, okay? So now we have the parent process, we have the child process, and now we know that the child process is stuck on the flush method. Why I'm not going to uh, get into it uh, into much uh, details, because not something uh, that is covered in the lecture. You can come find me after the lecture if you want to. Uh, but we can use PyList in order to see the surrounding code and verify, okay, this is the surrounding code. You can also, uh, for example, list the uh, fifth line and uh, so on. So it is a very Python-like interface that we can do a lot with it. You can go up and down the stack and uh, see what code is uh, running and why. Okay? So all very nice and, uh, and well. We also have uh, thread support, right? Because the GDB can attach to some process, can attach to a process, and this will make all the threads that the GDB is uh, all the threads in the process to, uh, that are currently running to be halted. Uh, this is the way GDB works. So if I have a Python code that is running multiple threads, attaching to a process with GDB will halt all the threads as opposed to using PDB, where if you set trace a threaded Python code, it will only halt one, uh, one of the threads. And if the other threads are uh, concurrently writing a lot of information to the STD out, uh, this will make life uh, difficult. We can switch to different threads. And we can uh, apply some command to all the um, uh, to all the threads, so we can uh, show where all the threads uh, are currently at, uh, Python code-wise. We can list all the surrounding codes, and we can switch to different threads, and we can do a lot of interesting th uh, things. This also works with core dumps. Okay, so if we have a Python process, it's running, it's stuck. I'm getting I'm getting a call during the middle of the night. I say I, I tell him, okay, so generate a core dump for me. Okay, once we have the core dump, we can take the core dump, send it back to our offices, and use GDB in order to debug exactly the way we, saw, we have seen before. Uh, a few gotchas. You need the debug info libraries installed. Uh, it's some magic uh, Linux uh, does for us. Uh, the upside is that when you first run uh, GDB on Python, it will tell you exactly what you need to do in order to install it. It will give you the exact command line. Um, also, to remember that optimized out Python code makes GDB not work very well. Uh, so if we compile Python with minus O3, expect bad things to happen. And lastly, we need root in order to attach. Right? GDB needs to be run as root or with uh, sudo in order to attach to some process. Uh, PyPrint, I didn't, I didn't uh, show you to make my uh, demo look very cool, but it can't traverse namespaces. So if, for example, we have uh, a class called foo, and foo has an attribute bar, uh, we can't uh, pyprint foo.bar, because it just won't work. Pyprint also can't uh, call functions. Ultimate goal, in my opinion, is using GDB, calling something like pygdb, uh, and let the GDB call a PDB setways and jump right into the Python code, and that's, in my opinion, the ultimate goal. Uh, the code is in the uh, Mercurial, in the Python uh, Mercurial. Python is open source, so are uh, very welcome to contribute. Um, a few references for you, if you want to look into it uh, a bit deeper. Uh, this here, this link here is the first revision in which 
uh, this was entered into the Python uh, Mercurial. So he asked, what does it do with the gil? Uh, I don't know what a gil is, I'm sorry. Uh, I imagine that it will uh, ignore it. It's, GDB runs on the C Python level. Uh, it will halt the C code, and the code will absolutely stop, in my opinion. The person here asked uh, what, if we, whether or not we need to load some uh, libraries in order to make this code work. All we need to do is uh, install the debug info libraries. Uh, this um, GDB will tell us exactly this is what we need to do. Do it, otherwise uh, your life will be a lot uh, difficult. You don't need any kind of uh, Python libraries uh, imported or something. It just works. Thank you very much.